Good morning and welcome to the Attract Online Conference. I'm Romain Muller and I'm joining you from Geneva, Switzerland. I'm actually an EU project officer here at CERN and I will be your host today. I will guide you through the program, the sessions and the activities that we have prepared for you. And who are you? Checking this morning on the registration website, you are coming from more than 70, from 55 sorry, countries, still a lot, and for a total of uh, close to 900 registered participants. So very welcome to all of you. This is a great sign that our conference and its theme has raised a great interest. So let's together ignite the deep tech revolution. Some of you might know what is deep tech, some of you might not. So I will share with you a first definition that will be refined through the day with the different interaction that you will see with the different speakers. So deep tech relates to technology that require a high level of scientific uh, knowledge to be developed and high investment cost to be transformed into products that can reach global markets. But when they do, they have a large impact on society. So this is really worth looking into what deep tech can do also for the European citizens. So the challenge of deep tech, simply put, is to go from science to innovation. But trust me, this is easier said than done. And you will see today that there are a lot of elements that need to be put together to achieve exactly this. But you will also learn that there are some initiatives that are exactly doing this today, going from deep tech to market. And Attract, which gives its name to the conference, is one of them. So what is Attract, you might ask yourself. So Attract is an Horizon 2020 project funded by the European Commission and steered by the consortium of research infrastructures, universities and industry. Research infrastructures have for mission to push the limits of scientific knowledge on key questions such as the origin of the universe, the cartography of space, the biology of living spaces and many more questions. So how these scientific efforts to create new knowledge can actually also help create new innovation that benefits society. So here is a video that will give you some more hints. Can you imagine a device helping doctors to prevent disease before it actually happens? Can you imagine using sensors to help the visually impaired navigate the world? Can you imagine green cities, where smart sensors let you know about the best products ready to eat? Attract is the starting point for getting science out into society, transforming new ideas into concrete solutions for a better future. The Attract project has committed 17 million euros to funding 170 breakthrough detection and imaging ideas with market potential. And has created a bridge between scientists, companies and young entrepreneurs. For the first time, Europe's top research organizations have come together to push the boundaries of innovation to promote job creation, growth and a better society for all. Today you will have the chance to know more about Attract from the people who are working on it and including as well the 170 project representatives. So if you have a taste for the future and future technologies, I really invite you to dive into the portfolio of these 170 projects and breakthrough ideas that they represent. So Attract will be our fil rouge of the conference and in a way it will be our starting point to explore with the invited speakers that we have gathered for this conference the following questions that are really the three main questions for the conference. So what are the existing initiatives promoting, promoting sorry, deep tech in Europe? How can deep tech change our future? And which ecosystem are needed to ensure that deep tech gets to market? So talking about creating or expanding ecosystem is, is also exactly what this conference should be about. And this is why we have split the program into two main parts. So the conference until today at four, that you invited for sure to follow from now up to four. And then as from today at four until tomorrow at six, you will have the chance to meet each other. And it's really what we meant when we have the concept of the conference, is that you have one-to-one -one virtual meeting, think of Zoom, 
with other participants to the conference. So now I will show you a couple of slides to help you really na navigate the virtual environment that we have put together for you. And so I invite you to follow what you're gonna see on screen and I will um, mention what you have to do and where you can look for the corresponding information that I will share with you. So for this, for actually uh, networking with the other participants, uh, you need to be registered. So from where you're watching now the webcast, there is uh, exactly this uh, slide that you see now, the upper menu, and you just click on the register now, and after some steps, you will be registered to the conference. Then uh, once registered, simply go on the tab participants, again on the same upper menu, and there you can filter and browse participants when there is a mention that they are available. So here is a, 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 a screenshot, I've, I blurred the names just for, for confidentiality, but what you see is available. So when uh, those participants are marked as available, it means that you can book meeting with them. Um, and this one-to-one -one virtual meeting I was referring to. You can send them a message or actually directly request a meeting. This is a very intuitive process. Um, so I invite you to go through this. Uh, if needed, you will see here on the bottom right of the screen, there is this little icon that will guide you to a help desk that will answer your questions for you to really get a smooth process of getting into this virtual environment. So now maybe what you want to do is also browse the 170 project of Attract because indeed, as I mentioned, they are very future looking and, and forward looking. So this is really something that would be of interest to you, I guess. So in this one, you simply, there are two options. So the first one is you go to the marketplace and then you can select project cooperation directly after this. And then you will see all the attract projects. And on this basis, also the name of the person which is linked to this project. Again, there it's blurred because of confidentiality reason. Just remind, uh, remember the name of the person because when you click on the project itself, you will actually be guided to the web page of the organization. So there might be some other people than the person that you want to target. So just remember, and when you go to the other page, then just click on the profile of this person to do exactly the same, send a message or send a request for one-to-one -one meeting. The second option to go and browse the 170 projects of Attract is what we call the Attract Showroom. So you find it in the home. So again, on the upper menu, just go to home which is the first choice. And then in the second menu, you go attract showroom. And what you will find there is a very um, visually prepared repository of all the documentation available publicly for the 170 projects. So there again, go there, browse and filter and find the project which are of most interest to you. Also, don't worry, there are going to be some videos uh, on this functionality we're going to be, which are going to be played uh, during the coffee breaks and the lunch breaks. So if you missed a bit what I shared now, come back for the breaks and then the videos will be rolling and then you have the chance to uh, look at them once again and make sure that you have the steps to follow to get to checking this 170 project and also interfacing with the other participants. And don't forget, you have to be registered for this. Anytime you want to come back to the streaming, because indeed we're going to have a very nice program uh, displayed for you today. Same upper menu, go to the live stage. And this is where we are with the webcast. So this is really the place to be for watching us. And uh, what you will have also on this live stage, uh, uh, and you should be seeing this already now, is either on the right of the webcast or below the webcast, depending on which device you are using, there will be a, what we call a slider window where you could share your questions to the speakers because we really want also your input. So it's not only us sharing with you information and knowledge, but also we would like that you trigger us with your question. And this is really what uh, this is being uh, developed for. Just be sure if you don't want your name to appear, uh, don't write your name, don't register. I mean, don't log in or don't register in this particular window to make sure that uh, you stay anonymous um, with your questions displayed then after to the other speakers. So this is what I wanted to share with you uh, on this virtual environment we have created. Of course, it would be another board game it was, if it was a physical event, but I think it's really important that now you realize all the functionalities you have to interact with each other, discover the project, and I'll be repeating this through the day because this is really part of the dynamic that we want to create. 
So now let's come back to the program of the day. And uh, here is a, a video that will uh, show you what's uh, waiting for us as from now. So as you have seen, we have a full and interesting program through the day. So I really invite you to stay at the morning and as well as the afternoon session. That will be my role as well. And not only this, but I really invite you, as I said, to reach to other uh, participants, to browse the project, to ask questions to the speakers. It's really an invitation. So they're taking the steps to join the ecosystem that we have in front of us. And that's really what we want also within Attract is to create an ecosystem. And within Attract and even beyond. So this is our invitation to you today. And that's why the conference has been designed for this. Indeed, we all have our part to play in igniting the deep tech revolution. So now let's move on to the welcome addresses for this meeting, for this conference. We'll have four high level speakers who will now share their welcome address to you, the participants of the conference. Two speakers will come from the European institutions Two speakers will come from the Attract project. And the idea is that really their welcome address set us in the right context, in the right insights for all us to embark into this journey that we have in front of us today with the conference and to have a really a mix of insights on research, technology, and innovation. We first welcome Jean-Éric Paquet, Director General of Research and Innovation at the European Commission. Uh, he couldn't be with us today because he's launching his own event, the EU Research and Innovation Days. Uh, however, he was very kind uh, to share with us this uh, video that he recorded for us. Well, good morning. It's for me a, a pleasure, a privilege to be able to participate even if uh, remotely, physically, and in time to the opening of the Attract conference. The Attract project has been genuinely groundbreaking. Uh, I think it is uh, the first time that we so openly together connect uh, science and innovation, which are often seen at, as different worlds, but where in, in Europe's research uh, policy, we are increasingly, I think, successful in promoting that connection and having around Europe's most spectacular research infrastructure the capacity uh, to see your teams, your, your, your researchers, your, also your, your youth coming together and presenting today now 170, I hope, groundbreaking innovations is truly remarkable. It really anticipates, um, uh, I hope, quite a lot what we will see increasingly in the next phase in Horizon Europe in the new European research area where innovation will be very visible. It is, I think, very much in line with um, the way Maria Gabriel um, and his teams in the Commission are promoting research as um, knowledge and solutions for COVID-19 recently. And of course, now for our transitions, the climate transition, the digital transition will require even more solutions which come from science and its knowledge and then often and more often than ever will translate into practical solutions, notably on the innovation path. So maybe my first uh, message would be to the 
uh, to those of you um, uh, responsible in CERN and in other research organization of the project. Colleagues, thank you very much. Uh, well done. This was really, um, as said, uh, particularly remarkable. I would also like to say that I'm very uh, myself frustrated not to be there throughout the conference and see uh, so much of these 170 um, groundbreaking ideas. Uh, I will of course uh, look into it and I will certainly get a sense of where you are all going uh, from the outstanding science which you master into these ideas which will be relevant for society. Now, what of course also now happens during the conference is that you have the European Innovation Council. Uh, Jean-David Malou uh, is part of the conference and his teams um, helped to set it up. And I think this, the event today should really allow all of you to interact, connect also with investors and see uh, whether we can, um, with a number of EU instruments, but also instruments which are available largely at national level, whether we can uh, engage with you um, uh, and see whether your ideas um, and your, your companies could indeed uh, be brought to the next level. The IC is very much around deep tech. You are deep tech. And why uh, have uh, we decided to focus the IC on deep tech? Because we believe that um, firstly this is uh, one of Europe's uh, competitive edges. I mean engineering and science are European. Admittedly, not only, but they are deeply uh, European. And connecting this wealth of uh, excellence, of expertise with innovation path, is what the EIC is all about. We have piloted the um, accelerator now over the last um, 18 months. And I think even within the team of the EIC, uh, within Jean-David's teams, we are surprised by the take-up. We have had uh, billions of euros of requests for funding and financing. But more important, if I look at what is excellent, what has been assessed as being excellent innovations, anchored in science, uh, providing deep tech uh, solutions, the request for funding and financing is overwhelming. Uh, and we are, to a large extent, uh, uh, with Horizon Europe's budget, uh, certain to be um, uh, largely overwhelmed with uh, great ideas and great innovation. That's a challenge for you coming to us. It's probably an asset for us in terms of choice, but it demonstrates that this deep tech um, revolution is at play and uh, particularly, uh, uh, and I want to say particularly, I don't want to say also, particularly in Europe. And I think the conference uh, will, will demonstrate that and again, I very much hope that many of your 170 projects um, will be able to develop further and that today's event will be remembered by many of you as a key moment, allowing indeed this uh, scaling up, possibly also through the European Innovation Council. So, uh, dear participants, uh, dear colleagues, again, thank you very much for, for joining in, in, in great numbers. I wish you a very fruitful um, conference and I'm very much looking forward to follow many of these projects over the next few years. Thanks to all of you. Stop. Thank you, Mr. Paquet. And this has been very nice words of uh, appreciation of the work that has been done for ATTRACT. And I'm sure that all the ATTRACT committees, uh, all the person that were behind ATTRACT uh, also uh, in the European Commission, uh, also the 170 project, the students which were involved uh, were really, really uh, appreciating those words from, from Mr. Paquet. So now uh, we have the chance and the pleasure to uh, welcome Mrs. Uh, Kaili. So Mrs. Eva Kaili is a member of the European Parliament and she's also, also the chair of the Committee for Future of Science and Technology. So uh, welcome Mrs. Kaili and thank you for joining us this morning. The promotion of innovation is really close to your heart, and, and this is really um, an invitation for this conference, which is linked to a deep tech uh, revolution. And so we're really, really looking forward to your views and insights of uh, deep tech in, in more general on technology and innovation in Europe. Thank you in advance. Thank you for having me, and uh, I want to wish you to have a, a, an excellent conference. It's really already um, high level uh, from what I saw, and it's really important to have the scientific community discussing 
on uh, upcoming exponential technologies and especially deep technologies that could and are already a revolution, but they, they need time for us to understand the whole impact they might have. And it takes time also to be um, market ready in terms of maturity. But um, they can provide us with uh, solutions to even global problems and also uh, tools to shape our world for the future. And um, it includes uh, um, the top priorities we now have in Europe. So from artificial intelligence, robotics, blockchain, material science, infant biotech, quantum computing and supercomputers. So we have already changed the prism from where we see things and the way forward in Europe. Um, during this pandemic, we realized that only with uh, new technologies, uh, we could resolve um, the problems we faced and we could overcome the, the barriers we saw we had. Because on the, in this world, uh, with the, the globalization taking place, actually um, for these challenges, there are no barriers. The barriers we have are the friction we, we created uh, among us in the um, single market that we're trying to achieve. And we have to remove in order to um, take advantage of the maximum of these technologies. Um, we definitely have to understand also the geopolitics of, of the new technologies and find the position of Europe in this world. Um, in in US, we have, I think, doubled the AI scientists that we have in uh, uh, US, four times more in US than in China. And uh, still in Europe, we invest much more on research. What we have not been uh, managing very well is to connect research to the market. And we have not developed a lot of industry here. We, um, sometimes it's difficult to invest a lot in, uh, in the industry when you have the traditional technologies uh, being convenient for our business models. And also when you have the friction among us with um, uh, physical barriers we have and 27 different um, tax and legal systems and also different languages. So what we're trying to do now is the upcoming months we're expecting um, the regulation that will give us legal certainty to explore and invest even more in this technology. So we're increasing the budget of investments, but at the same time, uh, trying to remove the barriers. We have uh, been trying to introduce, let's say, GDPR plus a data strategy, data governance. So we make good quality of data available to scientists and startups and entrepreneurs in order to create an enhanced competition, to have a more um, vivid environment for entrepreneurs. We also try to do it in the same time that we are working on the artificial intelligence. Um, now we just have the white paper, but we're expected to have um, the ethical guidelines um, that very briefly actually trying to achieve um, transferring the human rights to the digital world, so protecting human rights the way Europe has always been doing, to talk about rules, about responsibility and um, liability, obligations, how to avoid harmful AI, how to make sure that um, citizens will uh, have the proper digital skills, they will not be left behind, they will not be excluded from these future technologies. So we are expecting these files and um, Hopefully we will manage also to remain globally competitive. We may lack unicorns, but we are definitely doing excellent in science and startups. Um, the unicorns require a big market, and this is also what we are working on. Um, so um, the same time, I think with GDPR, we showed uh, what is our vision. We need a human centric, um, deep, te deep technologies and uh, innovation. And I think that uh, if somebody can achieve that, that would be Europe, because you see in China, you have to balance, um, actually there is no balance there for, for privacy or safety. They can use, they have access to unlimited data, fully controlled by the government. In EU, what we want to have is both privacy and safety. We want citizens to feel they can trust the system, they can trust the government, 
and they will be protected. They will not be excluded by a system that could rank them, exclude them from loans, from their insurance companies, or discriminate them in any way. Um, I have started, uh, launched a few months ago, just before the pandemic actually, the Center for Artificial Intelligence. So this is where we are doing um, assessments, uh, studies for um, every aspect of uh, that, that's being impacted by new technologies and artificial intelligence, the, the convergence with artificial intelligence. Um, we are trying also to be prepared with uh, scientific data for MEPs, for politicians to do the right legislation on time. And we are already working with OECD, trying to find a way to coordinate in order to achieve, um, to have global standards for artificial intelligence so that we get it right from the beginning and not try to fix things later on. Um, still, we feel we have the control, we have the vision, we have the tools, we have to find the method that we will proceed. And a final thing, we have been uh, having a program where we exchange uh, some days, uh, our views with scientists, we spend some time together. And I remember one thing very clearly. First of all, they raised uh, my concern and awareness on where AI is taking us uh, a few years ago and what they can achieve. And I remember one, one um, scientist, he told me, uh, we can take science at any level we want. So it would be great if we had like the guidelines, the legal certainty, and we would know where Europe wants to, uh, to lead. So I believe science can achieve uh, the best solutions, green technologies, technologies that would improve our, our quality of life, that would save lives. Um, what, we, uh, what we need to do is to give them the proper funding, access to quality of data, and make sure that all citizens will benefit from that. So um, I really want to, to wish you a very fruitful conversation and um, I hope you can contact us with all your ideas or your suggestions during the next year where we're gonna form the, the ground to, um, to invest even more in these exponential technologies. Thank you. Indeed, also in the DNA of a tract to create an ecosystem and, and around it also data is one of the key technology which is being developed. And so we really believe that creating an ecosystem also favored dialogues. And, and this is also very stimulating to see that uh, policy can go hand in hand with technology. And that indeed with the great powers comes great responsibilities. So thanks again for having addressed uh, this uh, conference with this uh, forward looking views and um, uh, all the best with the regulation in preparation on your side. Thank you again. So as I said, we had the privilege to have uh, two speakers from the European institutions uh, giving their views uh, on attract and on policy in general related to science, technology and innovation. So now it's time to come to attract and to meet two speakers who have been from the very beginning um, in the inception of what attract is today. Or maybe it's different than what they thought of, but at least they've really been instrumental in coming to what the project is today. That's part of it the project life in a way. So first we welcome uh, Dr. Michael Kresch. So Michael is the chair of the Attract Project Consortium Board and is as well the scientist in charge of the biomedical beamline ID17 at Eupen Sequatron Radiation Facility, ESRF, which is a partner of Attract. He was as well the former head of the Instrumentation Services and Development Division also at ESRF. Michael, welcome to this conference. And we're really looking forward to what you're gonna share with us on Attract. Thank you very much, Roman. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the previous speakers to have wonderfully set the scene. A warm welcome as well from my side on behalf of the Attract Project Consortium Board that I have really the pleasure and privilege to chair. Uh, it's truly a, a great moment. It's a moment we have been hoping for and waiting for a long time since the Attract idea has been born sometime around 2014. And let me just share with you a little bit of the history of Attract and how uh, we conceived and designed Attract and what brought us today here in this remote conference. 
A truck was basically motivated by the general observation that European research infrastructures, their national counterparts and their associated user communities are pretty good in producing excellent science or at the cutting edge and frontier of science, but many of the science enabling technologies often beyond the current state of the art do not make it to the market and therefore are not really exploited for the benefit of societies. And therefore the idea of a truck was to establish a, a formal framework to transforming breakthrough technologies being developed for pursuing often fundamental research at the outset into breakthrough innovations with strong industrial application and more importantly, ultimately of added value uh, for society. This brought together six European research infrastructures, part of IRO Forum, the European Intergovernmental Research Organization Forum, more specifically, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, better known under CERN, the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, the European Southern Observatory, the European Circuiton Radiation Facility, the European X-ray Free Electron Laser, and the Institute La Langevin. These research infrastructures and the consortium are complemented by the European Industrial Research Management Association, AIMA, to provide the link with European industry, and Alto University and ISADE, leading institutions and challenge-based uh, design thinking to provide methodologies for successful implementation of the open innovation process. So from the very outset, the ATTRACT consortium defined three ambitious goals. A, to streamline the breakthrough innovation process by coupling research infrastructures and their large communities to partners that are good and trained to extract societally relevant and or commercially interesting innovations from them. To introduce an innovation approach in which the scientific and industrial communities jointly pursue and generate breakthrough innovation in close and equal partnership with the ultimate goal to generate potential breakthrough innovations for, to the benefit of society. We were very grateful, lucky and happy that the attract phase one, which is running currently and comes to its end, received funding from the EC within the Horizon 2020 program. And as you know, the consortium launched an open call for proposals in the field of detection and imaging technologies. This is one and a half years ago only, and I still very lively remember the attract phase one kickoff meeting in May 2019. I had the feeling already at that time that things might go in the right direction. The attract open call received a very high resonance. There were more than 1,200 proposals for the 100 kilo euro seed funding. The selected 170 projects gather partners from 19 countries, well covering uh, the European research area and covering moreover the full spectrum from universities over research technology organizations, research infrastructures, small and medium sized enterprises, and even to a small extent, large industrial corporations. Now today, it is impressive to see the breadth of societally relevant themes such as health, communication, energy, environment, and others covered by these funded 170 projects. Just to mention one example, 24 funded projects are directly linked to cancer research, one of the missions of the next framework program, Horizon Europe. And I invite you really to visit the showrooms of these 170 projects today but as well later on the Attract web pages. Today, we are close to the end of Attract phase one. And unfortunately, in the lapse of only 16 months, the world has changed in a dramatic way. The COVID crisis has decelerated progress of the 170 Attract projects. You have been impacted, but it has not stopped you. Project partners continue to work hard and they adapted to the situation. The results, as we will see today, are impressive. An amazing quality of the conducted work already now leading to publications and high impact scientific journals. Some projects already triggered additional funding, both private and public. Some of the projects are 
at such an advanced stage already that they consider commercialization. I would like to mention as well, this is not only about the 170 projects. What is unique to attract is as well that we provided opportunities for developing the talent of about 100 young innovators that inspired by the deep tech from the funded projects, prototype solutions to tackle the present and future societal challenges. Here again, I invite you to visit our web pages and more specifically the students project showroom. Let me now turn to the future. Attract phase one is only the first step in the envisaged new open innovation cycle. Phase one focused on feasibility studies, technical readiness levels typically between one and two with a high risk of failure with the aim to efficiently and rapidly distill the most promising projects and give them the opportunity in a second phase to demonstrate that their technology is viable and can result in a clear product or service proposition. This is, we're talking about technological readiness levels between five and seven. This is the scope of attract phase two. If funded, the aim of the attract consortium in line with what the European Commission expects will continue enabling opportunities based on the most promising outcomes of attract phase one. Attract phase two would also provide this time up to 400 young innovators the opportunity methodologies and mentoring for developing novel concepts and prototypes of technological solutions addressing societal challenges in collaboration with the funded projects. Attract phase two will also undertake serious efforts for exploring the possibility of blending public and private financing in an open dialogue with their respective stakeholders in order to provide future models to streamline innovation funding in Europe. The successful completion of phase two would then be the experimental proof of the formation of an innovation ecosystem made of different types of organizations, publicly funded RIs, privately funded commercial entities, universities, national and regional development agencies with different rationales and economic modalities, but with one common aim to overcome the so-called innovation valley of death. These are not wild dreams. The track phase two is around the corner. The proposal was submitted in March this year, and we hopefully expect a positive response very soon, likely in October this year. I am personally very optimistic, and I very much hope that the track has a future beyond the 30th of November, the end of the attract phase one. Let me as well underline that attract is a concept and therefore is not limited to detection and imaging technologies. I can easily imagine that this concept can be generalized to cover other areas that are critical for the future of our society and planet, such as health, energy, environment, smart materials, and many others. We need, however, now to consider an additional element which we did not have on the radar when we thought about a track. The recent past, has taught us that we not only have to accelerate the process from fundamental science to benefit for society, but furthermore, we have to fully exploit the enormous innovation potential of research in general in order to be prepared for and even anticipate future crisis situations. We therefore need more than ever disruptive breakthrough innovations and technologies to ensure a sustainable future. We need to bring together the brightest mind in Europe and other parts of the world, working together beyond their own interests, beyond any borders and beyond any other constraints. In fact, I believe that European research infrastructures are a good example of how European science and technology sovereignty is compatible with openness outside Europe's frontiers, since openness constitutes a core value of us Europeans. You who are with us today are in the pole position. Use this opportunity to interact with the project participants, establish synergies, establish collaborations, and attract the attention and appetite of investors in industry for a bright and attractive future. I wish to finish with a few acknowledgements. We are very grateful to the European Commission, which fully financed the Attract Phase One project 
in the frame of Horizon 2020. I would like to take the opportunity more specifically to thank Philippe Froissart, at the time Deputy Head of the Research Infrastructures Unit in DG Research and Innovation at the Commission, our Project Officer Patricia Postigo McLaughlin, the Legal Officer Consolacion Moreno, and their colleagues for their excellent guidance and advice. Philip moved on, Patricia and Consolacion are still with us, and we are looking forward to a fruitful collaboration with Johannes Klumpers, who is now Head of the Research and Industrial Infrastructure Units at the, ECR, at the ECE. We're equally looking forward to seize opportunities to collaborate with the European Innovation Council, namely with Jean-David Malot, Fabienne Gauthier, and their colleagues. A big thanks to the Truck Project Administration Office for a fantastic job throughout the project. My colleagues from the Project Consortium Board, the Independent Committee, and the Project Advisory Committee, and all the key leaks from the Attract Consortium for a fantastic collective effort. Thank you all, because Attract, this is you. Your projects, your ideas, your inspirations, your support, and your hard work. I wish you all an enjoyable and successful conference. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for these uh, really inspirational words and also for uh, setting up the scene of uh, where is Attract coming from and also its original aspiration and still today a very fresh also outlook for the future. So thanks for, for these words and, and for sharing this also helicopter view in a way, um, uh, citing all the different actors, uh, also, also the different application domain that Attract is, is covering and also all the different uh, stakeholders involved. So um, I think for those who are uh, watching us, this is also and we're not uh, so much knowledgeable about Attract. This is really, really an ecosystem uh, initiative. And, and we uh, really want to bring everyone along to come from, from science to actually innovation. And as I said before, it's something which is not uh, so easy to do. It's easier said than done. And, and this is why there was a hard work. And, and that's what also Michael mentioned, a very hard work uh, being put in, in the last years and hopefully also uh, hard works in, in the years to come. And to, to go uh, towards the original aspiration of Attract as a program. So now we are joined by our fourth um, uh, welcome address uh, speaker. So it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Professor Sergio Bertolucci, who is the chair of the Attract R&D and I committee. So if you're asking yourself what it is, it's the committee who independently reviewed more than 1,200 proposals that were received at the first Attract call and that down selected 170, which is now the project uh, that you can see, the project portfolio that you can see on, on the showroom that Michael was mentioning, or also on the marketplace uh, on the conference website. So Sergio is a professor at the University of Bologna and a former scientific director at CERN. He's the co-author of 370 papers and contributed to the development of innovative instrumentation that led to major scientific discoveries. So Sergio, welcome to this conference. It's really a pleasure to have you on board. And um, I just have a simple question for you. Why creating a breakthrough ecosystem in the field of detection and imaging? Well, in these uh, very uh, fast transforming times, uh, uh, we have just to choose uh, an enabling technology uh, and uh, ecosystem and uh, deep tech in imaging and sensor is the basis of the, the famous Internet of Things because it's changing our life already in a very substantial way. We, we can see it from uh, today because there is this convergence of many technologies which are transforming uh, our life uh, sometime uh, in a way which uh, poses big uh, questions. So the choice of this uh, technology was very natural uh, considering uh, where it was coming from, from the search infrastructure for its obvious potential just to generate uh, and then, and then uh, uh, be transferred to society in a very natural way. Of course, uh, as uh, you said, and was repeated by uh, many of the speakers, uh, which I thank for their, uh, for their uh, uh, enlightening comments and uh, reflection, uh, it's uh, more easy to say than to do. And Attract is one of the ways uh, which 
uh, we have used just to facilitate and to speed up this process. Let me now uh, just go to my part of the talk, which in a sense, uh, in order not, not to make it repetitive and useless, I'm, I'm forced just to go into, into some reflection, which I offer to the community, uh, not because I have solution, but because uh, I think they, uh, they could uh, be a part of a starting point for a, a, a deeper elaboration. Uh, we talk very much today uh, about uh, deep tech and technological uh, sovereignty. And I liked very much the definition of technological uh, sovereignty, which in, in itself uh, is a, a, rather, a rather large concept, which might be even confusing. And uh, by using exactly the definition that the president, Ursula uh, von der Leyen, uh, gave, which is the capability that Europe must have to make its own choices based on its own values and respecting its own rules. This is, uh, in my opinion, uh, a very, very uh, linear uh, extension of what is written in the European uh, uh, Constitution, in the treaty establishing a constitution of Europe, where Europe was defined as a continent wishing to remain open to culture, learning, and social progress. Remain open. Uh, and these two words uh, had me reflect. Uh, open is uh, the, the thing which attracted first uh, my, my attention because uh, open uh, was uh, the concept of openness was uh, what was at the, the backbone of one of the success story of Europe. Europe has, uh, has made, uh, 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 has generated in the last uh, years, in the last many years, uh, as a matter of fact, starting immediately uh, at its reconstruction time after World War II, uh, has generated a very original model how you do science. And it has generated what we now, we have, which is the European research area. Uh, it is, uh, has been implemented uh, just creating an environment which was open not only to Europe, but to the world, where uh, was uh, enabling, which was enabling free circulation of researchers, scientific knowledge, technologies, and ideas. And we have offered it to an, an original, uh, as an original model to all the world, uh, proving that uh, you can harmonize in the same environment, collaboration and competition, and creating a community which has developed a passion for intellectual risk. Now, this, uh, th this has been, uh, th this has been uh, uh, a real uh, success story, uh, which has proven that the concept of Europe is powerful, if it can. Uh, just uh, leverage on two uh, main things. The scale, because nowadays in, in a globalized world, you need the scale. And the other thing is that our debt, the cultural debt, which, uh, which is using uh, at, his, uh, at his benefit, the complexity of our uh, history and which brings together uh, communities which are different and yet very, very uh, able just to reflect on, uh, on, uh, on similar uh, cultural uh, history. It, is, uh, it, it has been, it has been uh, uh, a success. It has been a success which has uh, helped a lot, uh, uh, helping the concept, the role of Europe in the world, and which has been also one of the few uh, language of peace that mankind has uh, succeeded just to, to use. And we have example, as Michael was saying, in our beautiful European uh, research infrastructure, which are essentially encompassing a worldwide community in a, a very successful way. 
And uh, this is, uh, has been shown also recently in this uh, COVID-19 crisis, where the European research area has been capable of responding uh, in a very timely and efficient way to the urgent needs by generating, uh, for instance, the, and articulating the European research area versus Corona action plan. The other word which is uh, very important uh, <clears throat> is remain in, in this. Uh, remain uh, is, uh, is part of the challenge in a, in a world which is uh, rapidly transforming uh, sometime uh, so rapidly that, uh, that, that uh, we hardly can uh, just reflect the, the consequences and on the uh, reasons uh, of the change. And uh, in this case, uh, you know, it's easy uh, to try just to import other models, but I'm afraid that we cannot uh, shy away from the need to elaborate an autonomous model uh, in order uh, of development, which is uh, a formidable task because it is a, a formidable task in designing a future. And uh, as uh, a, a really famous colleague of us, uh, which is, uh, uh, whose uh, quotation is often abused, uh, the most difficult thing is just to make prediction, especially about the future, but we cannot shy away. And it involves this reflection, uh, many, many uh, different stakeholders. It's a formidable task, I understand, and uh, it involves uh, the, not only uh, the scientists, not only the entrepreneurs, it, it involves politics, social science, humanities. There is a need uh, in this moment, not only of scientists, there is a need of philosophers, of social scientists, there is a need of uh, uh, reflecting on what is happening around us. And we cannot do it, sit there and reflect and simply, and simply uh, then find the solution and then uh, proceed. We have just to build the ship while sailing. Uh, and uh, this is exactly uh, what uh, we need just to do. We started uh, uh, the idea of attract, started the idea uh, just to contribute uh, a brick to this construction. Uh, if, you, if you like, uh, our Lego uh, brick, Lego is another European excellency, so um, to, to, this, uh, to this construction of future. And uh, attract is, uh, is a very flexible instrument as uh, uh, beautifully explained by uh, Michael, uh, which encourages the emergence of new ideas and, and their application to uh, the society. So we wanted just to do uh, bluntly uh, transfer uh, the good uh, thing of open science to open innovation. Because open science uh, the ecosystem of trust has succeeded, has, has succeeded just to generate a community which shares the same rules, which is uh, fond not only of finding solution and answer, but who is capable of setting questions, which is at the very most important part of this, of this uh, game. This, in our opinion, is a first step, and we want just to proceed on that. The instrument in itself is, uh, is flexible. It can be applied using an, uh, other platforms, other enabling uh, platform. It can be applied in different fields, but it, it uh, retains the idea that you want just to generate something which puts into motion in a flexible and agile way uh, the, the, the strength of uh, our, our uh, capability to generate idea and, and bring it to the market. We want just to generate appetite for risk. We want to uh, generate appetite for investment. We want just to generate, uh, contribute to generate a vision of the future. 
There are two important points that you already seen uh, today. Uh, this generation of uh, the ecosystem uh, has, uh, has uh, generated already uh, some results. There is, a, uh, as you see in the site, a repository of ideas, which is a beautiful place where uh, connection can be made, opportunities can be taken, uh, and essentially connects, connects not only uh, the, the, the inventors and the, the scientists, but connects the investors to the scientists and to the uh, opportunity market. This is one of the places where we are still studying because this, uh, which is now uh, uh, only the initial part, will need just to evolve uh, to, uh, to, to protect intellectual property in a more and more refined way using, again, technologies, and we are studying it. And the other very important thing is involving young generation in, in all this process. Because I think that uh, when we are talking about the young generation, which will be the owner uh, of the future and which will have just to face uh, very big challenges uh, like climate change, like sustainability, and much more than us. And, uh, and we are a bit ashamed of the, the type of world we are living to them. We have just to never uh, forget about, about one thing that we have just to do nothing about them without them. Hoping that in the future, nothing uh, without them will be uh, the normal uh, thing. Now, the final thing is that, uh, that I would like just to say is that uh, uh, in this moment, uh, we are very happy uh, where we are. And we will be very happy if uh, you think that is a valuable thing, but we will be even more happy for everything that the community attending to it will tell us what still can be improved. We are a humble but ambitious uh, bunch of people and we don't want us to stop here. Thank you very much and enjoy. Thank you for these very uh, nice words, also taking us on a geopolitical level, the strategic level, uh, involving the, the young generation as well, um, and also giving this sense of uh, inspiration of uh, which world we can create for tomorrow uh, if we all join forces, and, and also join forces in, in a system that can also adapt itself to the circumstances. And this was also echoed by, by Michael and yourself um, in, in, in the context of the pandemic as well. So thanks again, um, Michael and Sergio, for setting up the scene at a complete other level um, and putting ourselves really into the motion of the next session that's going to come through the day, where we're going to go into also discussing with the students who are involved in the Attract project and looking at also the funding mechanism, uh, looking at uh, all the possibilities offered by the Attract portfolio. So this is really um, inviting um, to, to reflect on what we have created but not only reflect on what we have created and how it can evolve uh, to best serve society in the future. Yeah.